Well, it's Thursday. You know what that means. It's time for a sports Q&A from me, the Schleg Daddy. Again, I split these up into two categories. The first part will be general sports questions, and then the second part is all fantasy football questions. I do these Q&As every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. That's the plan. So make sure you get your questions into me for the Sunday Q&A. That is solely a fantasy football Q&A. So make sure at, once you see this video up until maybe Saturday evening, you have any last-minute lineup trade waiver questions for me about your week fantasy football, then make sure you tweet them to me because I usually record that Sunday Q&A on Saturday night, so that way I could just have it uploaded and scheduled to publish on Sunday morning. All right, so let's get started with this Q&A, though. Go to the sports portion first. Matt Mefe2 asks, who's the greatest NBA coach and greatest NFL coach of all time? Um, From an NFL standpoint, I think it's relatively well understood that the gold standard, the standard bearer, the ultimate measuring stick is the guy who they named the Super Bowl trophy for. That's Vince Lombardi. I, and this is coming from a Bears fan. I don't think there's any question or any dispute that that's the greatest coach of all time. I don't think so. I don't I don't really know how that could be debated. Now, some people might say somebody like a Chuck Noll. And in that, there's nothing wrong with that. Four Super Bowl wins is four Super Bowl wins. Um, some people point to Bill Walsh because of the way he helped change the game. Some people point to Paul Brown and all the championships that he won both with his Browns in the AAFC and then in the NFL. Um, but I think when all is said and done, that Vince Lombardi is relatively well accepted as the greatest NFL coach of all time. Greatest NBA coach of all time? For my money, I still got to go with Phil Jackson. I know some of the older school cats will go with a Red Auerbach, but you're talking about a Phil Jackson that won 11 different championships with four different types of teams. You had the Jordan Pippen, Horace Grant Laker or Bulls of 91 to 93. And then you had the Jordan Pippen Rodman Bulls of 96 to 98. Then you had the Shaq Kobe Lakers of 2000 to 2002. And then later on, 2009, 2010, you had a Kobe Paul Gasol Bynum team that won back to back titles. 11 championships. Just think about that for a second. Uh, that to me, he's got to be the greatest coach of all time. Uh, Chris Krager, between Oakland, Jacksonville, Tampa Bay, could you see any of them still winless by Halloween? I don't think Tampa will be winless by Halloween. I could see Oakland being winless by Halloween, maybe with Jacksonville as well. But maybe it'll be one of those things in those two situations where the rookie quarterback will have a really hot week and they'll just find a way to win. One of them could be. But it wouldn't surprise me if all three of them found a way to get in the win column by then. Twin Strike 3 asks, do Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson deserve a second chance? If Michael Vick got one, then yeah. Ray Lewis got one. And now, since he found God, he's a hero. There's some things you cover, you can cover up and some things you can't. Well, apparently murder's one of them. Christ. Um, so yes, based off of precedent, Ray Lewis or Ray Rice, excuse me, and Adrian Peterson both deserve a second chance. Absolutely. Especially when you look at people like Michael Vick and even more significantly, somebody like Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis got the ultimate second chance. He obstructed a murder investigation at the very least and probably did a whole lot more. And he became one of the golden children of the NFL. He became one of the heroes of the NFL. So, yes, Rice and Peterson both deserve a second chance. Because as bad as child abuse is and as bad as domestic abuse is, to me, nothing is worse than murder. You would think. You would think. Jared Cador. What undefeated season was more impressive? Uh, the Patriots going 16-0 in 2007 or the Lions going 0-16 in 2008? Ah. Uh, Depends how you define impressive. I, you got to go with the Patriots going sixteen and zero. I mean, going sixteen and zero in the regular season—that's something. That's something. <laughs> but uh, oh, be quiet, dog. But uh, the Lions going zero sixteen. You know, that's pretty impressive too. To find that way, find a way to continue to suck throughout an entire season consistently, all sixteen games—that's something too. 
Uh, Master Havoc, do you see the Bears drafting a returner and drafting more defense in the 2015 draft? Oh, a returner will be at or near the top of the priorities. I personally, I and I talked about this heading into the 2014 draft, and I was proven 100% correct. The thought that the Bears were perfectly fine at wide receiver and didn't need to get some type of quick twitch slot athlete I thought was completely ridiculous and ludicrous, especially considering the depth of talent at that position at that type of player in that 14 draft. They've got to spend a first or second day pick on a slot receiver slash kick returner. Uh, whether that's a first round pick or a second or third round pick, one of those first three picks would have to be that type of guy. Do I anticipate them drafting more uh, defense in the 15 draft? Yes. Uh, their top priority should probably be a safety. Of course it won't be. Uh, they could use more help at corner. They could use help at linebacker desperately bad. And they could use more help on the defensive line. Um, but I don't think you can completely overlook the offensive side of the ball either. At some point in time, you're probably going to have to find a long-term replacement for Matt Forte, and we've seen nothing out of Kadeem Carey so far that indicates that he's that guy. You know, I talk about receiver and kick returner. I also look at the offensive line. Roberto Garza's old, and he sucks anyways. Um, you know, they, they have needs. They have needs on offense, too. You, know, you have to also explore a quarterback for the long term. Lots of things. Uh, Neyman's tweeter. Will RG3 be a franchise quarterback for the Redskins or another team, or do you think we've already seen the best of him? I hope that he could stay healthy, and I hope that he could be that guy, but based off of his propensity for getting hurt, he, I don't see how he could be a franchise quarterback for the Redskins or any other team. If he can't stay healthy, you can't play every game, you can't be counted on to answer the bell every week, you can never be classified as a franchise quarterback. It's that simple. So if change of scenery improves his ability to stay healthy, then, yeah, I think he could be a franchise quarterback. Uh, but he's got to be in the right place, right system, right talent around him. Uh, and I don't think Washington's that place. So those are the sports questions. Let's move on to fantasy football. 2013 HT Outlaws. I made a bold move by trading McCoy for Gore. Did I do the right thing, or are you going to call me a dumbass? Even the mere fact Hey, you had to put in there that I might call you a dumbass should let you know just how much of a dumbass you are. Now, with that said, <clears throat> did you trade LaShawn McCoy straight up for Frank Gore? Or was this a package deal? This is, again, where I talk about that perspective giving me all the details so I can fully understand the situation counts. Because if you traded a guy that you more likely not spent the number one overall pick on for a running back of the 49ers that's in his 30s, then you are a complete and total moron and should consider never playing fantasy football ever again. Because your stupidity is immeasurable. Immeasurable. Hope it was part of a bigger deal, and I hope that it wasn't straight up one for one. Because, yes, you are a dumbass. That's not a bold move. That's a dumbass move made by a fantasy football dumbass. Ding dong, dumb dick. You don't trade the guy that you took with the number one or number two overall pick for a guy that was picked several rounds later that is a 31-year-old running back straight up. There we go. Hope that answered your question. But you got to give me more details to let me know. Because if it's straight up, you are a complete and total dumbass. No good logic or justification can be given. Head case 814. Have Andy Dalton on a bye week. Should I pick up somebody like Eli or Flacco or take a chance on Bridgewater? Why, why do you have Bridgewater? Um, if you're going to take a chance on him, yeah, you could take a chance on Eli. Uh, even though he's playing the Thursday night game, I'm not even sure if this Q&A will be uploaded by that time. Uh, you could take a chance on Flacco against Carolina, especially considering Big Ben had a nice day against him. Um, yeah, I don't know if you really want to roll with Bridgewater, but maybe you do because it's not like the Falcons' defense is studly either. Uh, Twin Strike 3, with the history of revenge games, I'm thinking about starting Steve Smith going against his old team. Is this a good move? Uh, well, considering the number of targets he's consistently getting from Joe Flacco and the fact that revenge is clearly going to be on his mind, I, I think you've got to start him. I think you got to. You've got to roll the dice. You know, sometimes in fantasy football, you just got to sit there and roll the dice, but you got to make sure that you're making the gamble for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. I think in this case, based off of the targets, 
based off the fact that Carolina's secondary, I still don't think is all that good. And the fact that they got owned kind of bad by Pittsburgh in week three, and the fact that this will be a revenge game, I think you got to go with Steve Smith. You got to take that chance. Uh, Heel Deluzio, of these three receivers, which two should I start? Reggie Wayne, Cecil, Cecil Shorts, or Deshaun Jackson? It was Deshaun Jackson won. And, uh, um, God, am I going to say Cecil Shorts? Maybe Cecil Shorts. Oh, wow. I never thought I'd say that. Giannis 31 Skander. Should I start Greg Olson or Martellus Bennett? Uh, this is one of these instances where you just got to kind of go with your instinct because I can't really give you advice to say one has a clear advantage over the other. You know, I, I'm sorry. I know that sounds kind of chicken shit-ish, but, you know, Olsen going against Baltimore or Bennett going against Green Bay, I might gravitate a little bit more towards Martellus Bennett just because the Bears going against the Packers defense might have a couple of more red zone opportunities, which might mean a couple of more red zone targets potentially for Bennett. So I guess in theory, based off of that, you got to go with Bennett. Uh, Sam, 192, start two of these three. Eddie Royal, Roy Hallou, or Dwayne Bow, or could I rummage through the waiver pile? Rummage through your waiver pile. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what's available, and let's talk about this. Oh, my God. But in the meantime, if you don't, then you got to go with Eddie Royal and Dwayne Bow and pray. T-Bar 121, who's a better choice for running backs? 1-2 and flex. Arian Foster, DeMarco Murray, Shane Vereen, and Lamar Miller. If Foster's healthy, there's one of your running backs. DeMarco Murray is a must-start at the other running back, and your flex would be Lamar Miller. Obviously, if Arian Foster isn't healthy, then this question answers itself. Uh, Shab Lagouche closes out this Q&A by asking me, Hey, Big S, wondering who to start for my running backs this week. It's half a point per reception. See, that helps. And his running backs, he's got Ellington on a bye. I believe he has Adrian Peterson on his bench, which he has to have. Um, we got to keep him there, at least for the time being. He has Reggie Bush, Joe McKnight, and Matt Asiata. Uh, Joe McKnight is a reflex reaction to one fluke week. Drop Joe McKnight. Don't waste the roster spot. More likely than not, Jamal Charles will play, which means Niall Davis becomes a backup, which means Joe McKnight goes back to doing nothing. Um, I would say, based off of what you got then, that you got to go with Reggie Bush and Matt Asiata. Especially with it being a half point per reception. I think that's where you got to go. Uh, like I said, you need to drop Joe McKnight. I don't see where he has any redeeming qualities going forward. And uh, maybe hit me up on Twitter this weekend if you need help finding a running back or a wide receiver. And we can go from there. Thanks to all of you guys that submitted your questions for this q and I'll have another Q&A, the fantasy football one, coming up Sunday. Hopefully have a commentary video or two for you about the NFL in the next couple of days. See you later.